And now, Revelation Fireside. May 27, 2015. The Pentagon revealed Wednesday that active anthrax was shipped, apparently by accident, by the military from a USA lab to as many as nine states. Texas, Maryland, Wisconsin, Delaware, New Jersey, Tennessee, California, Virginia and New York were the states in which the deadly bioweapon was sent. The US was once hit with an anthrax attack in 2001 which killed and affected several people. John 13 19. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. May 18th, 2015. Prophecy, May 17, 2015. In the spirit people are seen wearing masks over their faces. Interpretation, a major contagious disease will arise or return to the USA shortly. May 29th, 2015. A bizarre new Ouija board inspired craze is sweeping the internet known as the Charlie Charlie Challenge. The game which began trending on social media, openly encourages children to partake in a real occult practice by summoning demonic spirits. Sources say the game has surged to the top of global social media charts being tweeted 1.6 million times just over the weekend, and that it is virtually being searched for in Google more than any other news event. John 13 19. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. May 30th, 2013. Children are seen being taught and exposed to divination and Satanism in a deliberate and official way. We rebuke this diabolical abuse in Jesus' name. Join us in the All Nations Effect. World Vision Day where the saints of God in every country gathers together on one day, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. one place, the highways and hedges, for one hour, 12 noon. Sa bawat isa, sa lahat ng mga nandito, nakakarinig ng tinig na ito. Ang pangulang. Kuya, porque de tal manera, amo Dios al mundo, que ama a su único hijo. Kuya, Padre, gracias en el nombre del Padre Espíritu. For one day I accepted Jesus. Jesus is coming soon. We need to be ready for that. And one accord, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with one voice. Queremos el título de la gloria de Dios. Worldwide. World Vision Day. World Vision Day. And I gave my life to Jesus because I knew it was real. Amen. We are from New York City. We are to tell everyone about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one Ah, okay. Ah, yes. Believers of Jesus Christ arrived in Asia, in Tokyo, Japan for World Vision Day. Kanishima. They began to distribute pamphlets about Jesus translated into the Japanese language, as they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. They even took the subways and ministered the gospel there. They were then noticed by one of Japan's media outlets who interviewed them for a documentary. As these were of those who prophesied of the, the great, great tsunami, tsunami of 2011. This a uh, vision day, this world vision day. This isn't just a good idea. No, this is a Holy Ghost God idea. And it's not going to die. It's not a fad. It's not something that just started. No, this is going to shake the world. Come on, somebody. You, it's time to take the gospel to the world. You're just getting started with it. Watch what it's going to exp. Oh, I'm going to prophesy right now. It's going to exponentially increase. Some of you who are saying, I would never preach in the street, you'll be there before this time next year. You'll be there. This phenomenon triggered a worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the body of Christ that has been termed by many 
Joel 228 Fulfillment in Motion. This outpouring led to a firestorm in the secular media headlines including Washington Post, New York Daily News, CBS Sports, TMZ Sports and NBC Sports with the participation of popular NBA star player, coach, commentator Pastor Mark Jackson, with his church True Love Worship Center. The ex-NBA Golden State Warriors coach was preaching from a street corner in California on Saturday, proselytizing on World Vision Day for one hour. My church fame and I was blessed to take part. Says, look at me and be saved. Read it again. For I am God and there's no other. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is World Vision Day. Get out there and preach. Driving, doing drive-by, preaching. Preaching from my car, going through neighborhood to neighborhood. Jesus is alive. I need to know if you guys have Jesus in you and in your heart. He's alive. He's alive. Trying to pull your people out of the flames of hellfire. We're calling on all churches, all pastors, all evangelists, all missionaries, all saints from every kindred, every tongue, and from every nation, to join us July 4th and beyond for World Vision Day. Listen, come on. It's not a one-man thing. It's not a two-man thing. It's not a three-man thing. But it's a world thing. It's not a one-man thing. No, it's not a two-man thing. And now, a gripping testimony from a Harvest Army evangelist. When I was five years old, I was taken away from my mother, myself and four other siblings. We were put in foster homes, but we were separated. No one told Shayna Joseph why she couldn't be with her mom or why she and her sister lived apart from their siblings. We weren't allowed to eat at the table. We had to stand in a corner um, and eat bones. They didn't give us food like they gave the other children. She took out her pain and frustration on others. I was getting into a lot of fights, um, very angry. A lot of it had to do with the fact that uh, I miss my family. We had visits to go see our family. Most of the visits, my mom never showed up. So, you know, that made me very angry. My grandmother would come, my aunt would come, but my mom wasn't there. After five years, Shayna and four of her brothers and sisters were reunited when their grandmother gained custody of them. By now, Shayna had become withdrawn. If I had toys, I played by myself. I didn't really want to be bothered with anyone. The thought of my mother, my family was always on my mind. Shayna was smoking at 12 years old and soon joined a gang. She was always on the streets and that's where she learned the truth about her mother. That my mom was on drugs. Um, everybody on the street knew. All my friends, um, they knew about it. She's the reason why we were taken away. That made me angry. At 13, Shayna overdosed on pain pills. Even at a young age, I knew this is not what I want. I have friends who they had good families and I was jealous of them. They had their mom, they had their dad. Um, you know, people who cared about them. Uh, their family would come to school to see them in the games, but nobody showed up at my games. Nobody, you know, said, hey, Shayna, go ahead, you know, keep up the good grades. I'm proud of you. I never heard a I love you at all. The next thing Shayna remembers is waking up in the ER, having her stomach pumped. After she recovered and was released, she went right back to the streets. When Shayna was 15, she met Marland, a member of an up and coming hip hop group called Sporty Thieves. As they became serious, he started taking her to his church. He really loved me. He was always with me, um, you know, and he actually was the one who introduced me to God. Eventually, Shayna got pregnant. They planned on getting married, but it would never happen. 
One night, Marlon was walking near Shayna's home when he was hit by a drunk driver. Shayna ran to the scene where she discovered both legs were badly crushed. I saw him get up on his knees and I saw the people yell, um, you know, get back down, get back down. He kept trying to get up. But I heard him praying and I heard him repenting of his sins and asking uh, Jesus to forgive him and to wash him in his blood, you know, and to let him into heaven. I heard him saying, you know, protect my son. I can't forget those words as he lay there on the ground. Paramedics arrived after what seemed an eternity and took him to the hospital. The doctors came out and told my grandmother and told myself that uh, he passed. Um, and I think that was like the worst news I could ever hear because I was back to where I started, but this time I was with a baby. And to me, all the love that I was getting now was gone, completely gone. Days later, a few women from a nearby church paid Shayna a visit. They had heard about the accident and came to check on her and offer their help. They also shared with her the love of Jesus Christ and how only he could save her. I shared with them some of my childhood and what I've been doing. She said, God can change your life. You might not be able to repent the way your boyfriend, you know, that doesn't mean you will. And that right there alone was the turning point for me where I said, um, I don't want to go to hell. I was in the living room and um, she asked me to repeat after her as she lead me to the Lord and I did. I repent of my sins, I confess and acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. While Shana embraced her new life as a Christian, it took time to heal from the pain and hurt. I will cry. I don't think there was a day I didn't cry. I cry, I cry. Um, it's times I would punch the wall, but I was angry. I was angry. My life is not turning out the way I wanted it to turn out. Through the support of people in her church and prayer, she finally saw herself as God sees her. I can hear him saying, it's going to be OK. You're going to make it. You're not going to turn out like everybody else said you're going to turn out. You're not going to end up like your mother. You're going to be able to make it. You're going to uh, um, be successful. And it was that point that that love that I thought was taken away, I felt the love that I needed. And that was the love of Jesus Christ. And he was revealing to me that I'm all the love you're looking for. I'm all the love you need. In time, Shayna was able to let go of her anger and forgive her mother. She also married Stephen. And today they have three children, Giovanni, Venice, and Marlon Jr. She's a minister at Harvest Army Church International, the same church that took her in 14 years ago. Shayna and Stephen travel the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He revealed his love to me. He revealed that this is the love you need. You know, your mom's not around, but I'm here. He revealed to me that, you know, I will take care of you. I can change your life. And all I needed to do at that moment was release everything to him. You know, not just attend church, but surrender everything to him. Today's sermon, beware of the forbidden fruit. But never forget what the Lord has done for you. Never. It's easy to forget. Come on, somebody. And the time we begin to forget, we enter into another realm of the very mental faculty that can damage you. Never forget what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Never forget what others have done to. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Lucifer was in heaven. He was the best of singers. Ah. But he was not contented. As far as he was concerned, God wasn't fair because he should have made him equal to God. Mm. With all of the gifts and talents that Lucifer had, Lucifer forget. 
Lucifer forgot what the Lord had done for him. Hallelujah. So he began to speak against the Lord. He began to have meetings with one third of heaven. Come on, somebody. Be careful of your meetings. Be careful of your phone meetings. Are you hearing me? It happened in heaven. So how could we think it won't happen here? Come on. Did you hear me? They didn't have phone and it happened in heaven. But now you got phone. And you got what the other stuff you got here? Text. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a demon that God said would operate in the last days and it would be triggered by the Antichrist and it's called unthankfulness. Anytime we get into an attitude or a spirit of unthankfulness, you lose your, the norms of your mental faculty because you got to remember to be thankful. Amen. So Lucifer went and gathered the angel and said, You see, God, you could have done more. You could have made me equal. Look how I sing good. Look how gifted I am. You could have made me like him. Then when he made me like him, I'd made you this and I'd made you, I'd make you this and make you that. And they listen on the phone. They listen. I say, you know, it sounds interesting what you said. And one third went with him from God. Hey! And because of that, he was cast out of heaven. The ungrateful will be cast out. It has nothing to do with what a preacher say. The unthankful will be cast out. Come on, somebody. I hear the Lord says, beware of the forbidden food. Did you see it on Facebook? Where's your Facebook? Where's your Facebook? Come on, somebody. Beware of the forbidden fruit. He was cast out. He wanted to have what God had. He wanted gotcha. That's the root of all the false religions today. Trying to get what Satan could not get. Hmm. So there came Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. No better place, come on somebody, than the Garden of Eden. They named the animals. They were big. They ate everything that was in the garden. They did not have to cook. Come on. Everything was available. The beauty, the meadows, the rivers, the springs, can you imagine? Come on, somebody. Just beauty and splendor. My God of mercy, Jesus. But there was one fruit. God says, not yours. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, those watch across the world, no matter how blessed you are, there is always something you must not touch. No matter how you're gifted, there is something you must not touch. There is somebody you must not talk to. Come on, somebody. There's a place you must not go, even though you can take the plane. Come on, somebody. There is a job you must not do. There is a place you must not live. There is a book you must not read, even though you're mighty and powerful. You ain't listening to me. Yeah. The serpent came like he did in heaven and said, No, you, you need the fruit. If you get that fruit, you'll be like God's. I didn't get through, but you will get through. Hey! And they listened to the serpent eat the forbidden fruit and were cast out of Eden. 
Satan was cast out of heaven and Adam and Eve was cast out of Eden. Be careful of being cast out of your best place. Be careful of being cast out of a move of God that hears God's voice. Let me tell you what happened. Often things happen in the move of God and put the leaders in a spot and, and, and people do things but you can't do nothing. As leaders, you can't do nothing. You can barely do anything. Always give your leaders room to do something. Don't put them in a spot. Don't put her in a spot. Leave room. Amen, my God of mercy. A man of God, a bishop of God did something recently. And he, 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 he discovered he didn't like it. And he sent a letter and said, discipline me. He said, I want some discipline. Did you hear what I said? He said, I want some discipline. I don't want to be left undisciplined. I want some discipline. Nothing big he did, nothing big, nothing big, that's a, a small little thing. Come on! But he knew the importance of not putting your leadership in a spot. Because if the leader is not given the room to do something, God will do something. Are you, are you, are you with me, somebody? And some of the time when you, when you even decline from a promotion, is the Lord judging you. You can't see it, so you can't rise up to the blessing. It's, 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 it's like, it's like uh, Judas when he was finished he could have asked Christ's forgiveness like Peter did come on somebody but he went and killed himself he destroyed himself he, up, he outdid himself I have it somebody you gotta be very very careful of eating the fruit somebody said beware of the forbidden fruit now this is only for the people who are in the garden of eden these are for the people who are blessed and the strugglers i'm talking about you blessed people you fire sticks and power box come on somebody god said even though i'm using this all great remember i use lucifer great but he was drawn to the forbidden fruit he wanted more than god gave him he, he always complained. He murmured. Never satisfied. Always find fault with godly leadership. Somebody said, Beware of the forbidden fruit. The Bible says, A man called Lot, hmm, he had the privilege to have access to Abraham. Anybody remember Abraham? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Anybody remember Abraham? Abraham was the father of faith. Abraham was, mm, was the first man of the God's own heart. Come on, somebody. Look at the privilege to be around Abraham. You have to be careful of your behavior around the Abraham. Glory to God. I spoke just a couple of days ago, but, but I think I call familiarity fallout. Let me tell you what that is. Glory to God. It's easy to not realize that you have an Abraham around you because, because you're familiar. <laughs> As we heard that familiarity brings contempt. Are you not? Come on, so some people, they are familiar with their kin, and their kin is a king, and they can't get it. Their, their, their kin, I mean kin, I mean family, I mean blood, is a prophet, and they can't get it. I hear that? And there are some folks, the, 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 the countrymen, the people in their country can't be the head of nothing. What is for my country? Come on, somebody. Some folks want to from their community. Jesus, when he rose on the earth, he meant to say, it's not that the carpenter's son. So you got the king, you got the, oh my God, Jesus, help me here, somebody. You, you got the king, you got the country, uh, and you got the community. Then you got the colleagues. Come on, somebody, because we work at the same place. And we went to the same school. More schoolmate, don't rate schoolmate. You don't want any teaching. And if your schoolmate is head over them, they give trouble. 
if, if you come on somebody yeah you know what i'm teaching here come on somebody somebody said beware come on i ain't finished so you have so you have the king to help me out then you have the you have the country you have the community you have the, mm, the colleagues then you have the confidence that those who uh, do security and all do i'm a beer as our heads ah if they don't careful they don't realize my daughter is an Abraham around them so they want more than what they got they want more than the access they want a place here and a place there they want things they want money they want this so they begin to pressure Abraham come on somebody Lot, hallelujah and his men come on somebody begin to pressure Abraham and Abraham didn't know what to do and Abraham said okay I can't take the pressure no more take the best part come on be careful of what you're trying to take away rubber from Abraham be careful of competing with Abraham you ain't with me somebody somebody said beware of the forbidden fruit so Abraham said you know what go and take that nice place go and take that place of vanity take that place of the meadow Come on, somebody. Every day, God speaks to vessels around the world to prophesy and prove Him as God. But many times, those vessels are not the popular names of Christian ministry. For this reason, it becomes difficult to warn people of God's Word without worldwide access. God said in His Word that He would prove Himself through prophecies and revelations, not only from the Bible, but also speaking through His servants. On HarvestArmy.org, prophecies and revelations are posted almost every day and are fulfilled in due time. It is our responsibility as Christians to listen for the voice of God. The Bible says not to be ignorant of the devil's devices and plans. We encourage you to check the updates on our Revelations page every day. The website is www.HarvestArmy.org. That's www.HarvestArmy.org. Don't make fulfillment of prophecy be a surprise to you.